have no qualms with violating uh, the court's orders because you're innocent, because you didn't do anything wrong. You were just doing your job. You have no problem trying to kick an officer. Your explanation about what happened is preposterous. It's on video. You have no problem lying to officers. It's happened multiple times. They're recorded conversations. It's just more lies. No objective person believes them. No, at the end of the day, you cared about the Jets, the podcasts, and the people finding overview. You abdicated your position as a servant to the Constitution, and you chose you over all else. Yes, you are a charlatan, and you cannot help but lie as easy it is for you to breathe. You betrayed your oath for no one other than you. And this is what makes Miss Peters such a danger to our community. It's the position she held that has provided her the pulpit from which she can preach these lies. The undermining of our democratic process. The undermining of the belief and confidence in our election systems. It's not about questioning it. No one says you can't question, you can't ask. It's completely different. And if you don't understand that distinction, then there's nothing I can say or do here today that will change your mind. So the damage that is caused and continue to be caused is just as bad, if not worse, than the physical violence that this court sees on an all too regular basis. And it's particularly damaging when those words come from someone who holds a position of influence like you. <clears throat> Every effort to undermine the integrity of our elections and public's trust in our institutions has been made by you. You've done it from that lectern uh, the voting public provided you with. Everything you've done has been done to retain control, influence, the damage is immeasurable. And every time it gets refuted, every time it's shown to be false, just another tale is weaved. <clears throat> so I'll begin by saying I've considered all of those purposes of uh, stain of an execution of a sentence. Uh, I've mentioned all of them here generally in my comments already, and I find that a stay of any sentence I impose would be wholly unwarranted. All cases have a possibility of reversal on appeal, no doubt. I'm at peace with all the decisions I've made here. If anything, I gave you and your counsel far too much leeway at times, but the rulings I made came at, after much consideration, incredible amounts of internal debate, and I trust in accordance with the applicable law. I consider the sentence uh, here in this case uh, what are available to me, probation, Community corrections wasn't requested, but uh, it wouldn't be an option in any event, and an incarcerative sentence to the Department of Corrections. Probation's focus is rehabilitation. That is, for folks who have minimal criminal histories, low LSI scores like you, Ms. Peters, but where uh, punishment isn't really on the table. It's about putting someone back in the community who's not a risk and giving them a chance to correct those things that brought them before me in the first place. Community corrections, which again isn't available, but nevertheless I'll mention is another option that I could still order. It's much more stringent than probation, but it's not prison. And it's for folks who have even higher needs. Again, drug addicts, alcohol abusers, and the like. And prison is for those folks where we send people who are a danger to all of us whether it by, be by the pen or the sword or the word of the mouth. Prison is where folks go, where punishment is what we're focused on because the crime committed is so significant that anything less would unduly mitigate the seriousness of the same. I mentioned before there are no mental health concerns. There's no good reason why you're here, Ms. Peters, other than these are all the active decisions that you made that cost our county significantly, but also more importantly, cost you greatly, Mr. Wood, all the members of the county who worked uh, and trusted you when you asked them to do things that they did on your behalf, it's part of your lies. The expense, the toll is immeasurable. 
So putting you on probation when you have zero needs that would be met by probation is the very definition of unduly depreciating the significance of what it is that you've done here. The harm that you've caused our community and continue to cause. Community corrections is the same. So prison is the only place that duly meets the purposes of sentencing in this matter. And therefore the sentence and judgment of the court is as follows. As to counts one and four, the judgment and sentence of the court is three and a half years in the Department of Corrections. Those sentences will be concurrent to each other. As to count two, the judgment and sentence of the court is three and a half years consecutive to counts one and four. As it relates uh, to the misdemeanor charges, count eight is 120 days in the Mesa County Detention Facility, concurrent to count nine and 10, which will be six months in the Mesa County Detention Facility, consecutive to the prison sentence. The reason those sentences are consecutive is because those sentences are, as the prosecution stated, directly related to what it is that you did here in our community, the damage you caused this community, the breach of your oath to the electorate in Mesa County. Your sentence will be followed by three years of parole. You have two days of pre-sentence confinement credit. Anything I missed? Anything else we need to address? Judge, I think you missed a sentencing on, on count six. Oh, I'm sorry. Count six is criminal impersonation. That's also consecutive. That's uh, 15 months to the Department of Corrections. And the so it's eight and a half years total uh, plus the six months for a total of nine years of incarceration.